What's up, y'all? It's your man, Stephen Bardo, coming at you with another edition of the Flying Illini Report. This is where I cover, I go in depth on expert analysis around University of Illinois men's basketball program. The last game, Illinois hosted Iowa, number seventh ranked Iowa at home. And it was an outstanding game. One of the probably the top three Big Ten games of the year thus far. Illinois wins 80 to 75. Io DeSumo was outstanding. Um, he really has worked on his game. Uh, he's going left a lot better right now. He's coming down a lane and dunking on people. He's, there's no hesitation in his game. He made two moves where he started left and came back right and got to the rim. Oh, man. The, the, that, he looked like a pro in that game. He was the best player on the floor. That was probably Trent Frazier's best game as an Illini. He came through with flying colors. I believe he had 24, yeah, 24 and four rebounds and played good defense as well. And then Jacob Grandison had a double-double of his own. He had 11 points and 10 rebounds and Kofi Coburn, nine points and 10 rebounds. But what the most important thing Kofi did, he got fouls on Luca Garza. He made Luca Garza play defense, got him in foul trouble, took him out of extended periods of the game in the second half. And I believe that that allowed the Illini to win. And there was a uh, 80 to 75 score, but the game really was controlled down the stretch by Illinois. I think that was their most impressive victory of the year. I believe it was their uh, best win of the year against uh, a ranked opponent. And they, they looked like they took advantage of that extended period of rest that they received. So this week they have two games coming up tomorrow, uh, Tuesday, they are at Indiana, and then Saturday, they host Wisconsin. So let's talk about the Indiana Hoosiers first. Illinois, in their first matchup, was able to come away with a, I believe it was a 60 to, 69 to 60 victory. And Io DeSumo had 30 points, played out of his mind. Kofi Coburn was in double figures as well. But here's the key when you play Indiana. You have to occupy Trace Jackson Davis and you have to force him into a tough afternoon. Well, I think this will be a tough afternoon. Three of 13 from the field. He got to the free throw line only five times and one of the best in the country at doing that. And he got eight rebounds. So I believe he finished with 11 or let me think six, 11 points. And he was far below his average. Armand Franklin went off for 24 points. But the Illini really did a great job defensively on Tracy Jackson Davis. They're going to have to do the same thing. Uh, Trace Jackson Davis is a lefty, a big, he's very mobile. He can run. Uh, he's an underrated passer. And Indiana does a good job of moving him around the, the, the box. They'll move him from box to box. They'll put him up on elbows. They'll put him at the top of the key in ball exchange um, action. They move him around quite a bit. And so it's going to be important that Kofi stays out of foul trouble. George Bishanis really can come in and do a fan, a fantastic job himself, but you would prefer that Kofi gets the majority of time against him because Kofi's so big and he's, he's agile. And I think he can wear down Trace Jackson Davis. And then you bring in Bishanis really behind that and really go at uh, Jackson Davis with a different look with Georgie in the game. And so I think if Illinois can remember the game plan and how they executed against Iowa, the fact that Indiana is, their game plan is based around a dominant big, similar to Iowa. Indiana doesn't have the, the overall talent that Iowa has, but Indiana, in my opinion, has a similar approach in that Trace Jackson Davis is going to get the ball early and often, and he's the guy that they revolve around. Now, Aljamie Durham is capable Rob Fennessy is capable, but they've been uh, maddening, maddeningly inconsistent. I hope I said that right. They've been very inconsistent. They went to Iowa and really put a defensive display on the second half. And Ray Thompson, starting power forward, and Trace Jackson Davis were in foul trouble. They were on the bench in extended minutes in the second half at Iowa when Indiana beat them. Jerome Hunter. And Geronimo, they were fantastic defensively on Garza and the Iowa Hawkeyes in that victory. So Indiana's capable. 
They're capable of beating the Illini, no doubt. But I like the Illini in the matchup against Indiana because I think they may have hit a turning point in their season where Jacob Grandison, when he's rebounding like that, because Kofi Coburn uh, is a good rebounder, but if you have another guy that's, that can get you double-figure rebounds and then Iowa Desumu doesn't have to rebound as much and he can uh, um, concentrate more on the defensive end and also attacking on the offensive end, man, this, could, this is a good Illinois team. So I like the Illini at Indiana in this game. The second game the Illini have over the weekend, they host Wisconsin at home. It was a thriller last year in the only meeting between Wisconsin and Illinois. Illinois won that one 71-70 in the Kohl Center. Kofi had a good game. I believe he had a double-double. Io uh, had the winning shot down the stretch, and I believe he ended up with 21 points. So with Wisconsin, it's, they're, they're a weird team to me because they're, they're the oldest team in the league. They're the, and so when you look at them, they can beat anybody in the league, anybody, right? But they can also lose to anybody in the league, which they showed in getting beat at Penn State by 10 points. Now, Penn State's a quality team. They're in the lower half of the Big Ten Conference. They're still a quality team. So Wisconsin, has, has, they have an annual kind of dip where even in their final four runs, ladies and gentlemen, they would have um, a five-game stretch where they would struggle a little bit, and then they would regain their form. Even last year, if you remember, in the, in the game against Illinois, Wisconsin's Kobe King had 21 points. That was one of the last games that Kobe King played for Wisconsin. He left the team amidst controversy. The Badgers rallied and ended up getting to share the Big Ten title last year. So this team is capable. And um, Demetri Trice is playing uh, his best basketball of his career. Micah Potter is able in the post. And he can pull out on the perimeter. Very similar to Garza. Uh, he's not as effective in the post as Garza, nowhere near it. But outside, he's as good, if not a better uh, shooter and maybe even a better facilitator because Micah can pump fake, put it on the deck and pass. He can facilitate a little bit. So it'll be a challenge for Kofi to start out. Um, Nate Reavers is another one that could have a big, big game. He struggled last year in the game against Illinois. Uh, he's been wildly inconsistent this year in a year that I thought he'd be dominant but he could have a dominant performance. And here's the thing, Wisconsin to me plays better on the road than they do at home. I know that goes contrary to their last loss at Penn State where they lost by 10, but Indiana took them to double overtime at home. Indiana should have won that game. Maryland beat them at, Mar at Wisconsin. Um, someone else played them very tough down the stretch at home. So Wisconsin, seems in my opinion play better on the road now with that being said it would almost be a toss-up um this one's hard to call for me and i'm not i'm just gonna call this a toss-up i'm not gonna uh prognosticate either way because it's so close to me there's so many different variables right so there is no kobe king he's he's gone but they do have davison who can shoot the lights out tough competitor knows how to play knows how to win Jonathan Davis, who, uh, in, in my opinion, is the best young talent in the Big Ten. I think this kid could be the best player in the Big Ten at some point. I think he's that talented. Aline Ford is averaging right at double figures. Um, the aforementioned um, Michael Potter, he lives for games and challenges like this. Nate Reavers will probably step up. He's been inconsistent, but this is the type of game where you'll see him have a presence. Um, I mentioned Aline Ford. I think Aline Ford is a unique talent at 6'8 that can space the floor. He can get inside. He's putting it on the deck a little bit more. Uh, so Wisconsin is a dangerous team, especially on the road. Um, I don't know that they have anybody that matches up well with Io. I don't know that anybody, maybe Michigan with um, Shawnee Brown um, and maybe a couple of others, but there's not many. There's not many players that are going to match up very well with Io DeSumo. And as long as Io comes into the game with that kind of attack mentality and Jacob Grandison 
can give you support on the backboard and give you points when given opportunity, I got to give the, I, you know what? I give the slight edge to the Illini at home. When, when Granderson plays like that, Trent Frazier relaxes. You saw what he did. He had his best game in his last game against Iowa. Io DeSumo was outstanding. Kofi was, was good, a point shy of a double-double. So I'm going to give the Illini the, the slight edge at home in this one. But don't be surprised if Wisconsin pulls off the upset on the road because uh, I think these teams are that evenly matched. And again, if you go back to last year's matchup, Illinois 71, Wisconsin 70, it was a very close game throughout. A lot of lead changes. I, ex- I expect much of the same in this one. If you guys want to be a part of the uh, Bartles Breakdown tribe, I call it the tribe, my insider group, you can text me at 312-847-2739. That's 312-847-2739. Or there's two ways. That's the first. The second, go to Facebook, sign up for Bartles Breakdown Group. I have Bartles Breakdown page where the show usually is broadcast, but I also have Bartles Breakdown Group. That's a the insider group. That's the tribe where I'll give you uh, sneak peeks at, on game locations, they're starting to ease us out a little bit now. I was at Northwestern last night. The group got a chance to see some photographs I got with Jim Phillips, the outgoing AD, who's going to be the new commissioner of the ACC. He's an Illini, y'all. He's a fighting Illini. That's where he got his undergrad. Saw him last night. So I showed uh, clips of that. I showed uh, me and Kevin Cougar right before the Illinois-Iowa game. So if you want to be a part of Bartles Breakdown Tribe, Go to Bartles Breakdown Group, sign up. It's only three questions. Answer the questions, they're very easy. And you'll be a part of the, of the tribe. The, the expert analysis, insider information, you'll get sneak peeks. And also during March Madness, I'll give my picks to the tribe. I, don't, I used to do it broadly. I don't do that anymore. Only going to do it to the tribe. So I hope you consider joining. I hope you like this uh, video. Please like, share, and comment on this. It really helps it grow. I think Illini fans appreciate this expert analysis on their particular team. And so let's keep this going and grow this thing. Good luck to the Illini this week. Thank you, Illini Nation. Love y'all. Holla at y'all later. Peace.